Retirement is often seen as a destination, but we believe it's an opportunity to pursue your passions, realize your dreams, and live a purposeful life. Great decisions, incredible lives. Retire with Intention podcast is about more than just money. It's about embracing the things that truly matter, the experiences, the relationships, and the impact you leave behind. Here is your host, John Creekmer. Well, welcome to another edition of Great Decisions, Incredible Lives, Retire with Intention. And like we say every single week, it's not just about retirement. It's truly about living a life with intention. And it's about saying, hey, how can I increase my knowledge uh, just a little bit every single week so that I can make wiser decisions to help us accomplish those huge goals and really live that life that brings contentment and joy and fulfillment um, every single day. And uh, I'm so thankful for the feedback we've gotten from everybody over the last couple of weeks. Um, and so a couple of interesting topics on tax and also estate. Um, and then a phenomenal interview we have with Brian uh, Guru from last week. Um, that's just uh, a lot of folks have just been so excited about the information given there uh, about having aligning everything with your core values and then making sure we have got great decisions in the way. Um, today, I am very excited to introduce you to a new friend of ours, Nancy Schwartz. And uh, Nancy is going to be uh, just a phenomenal uh, conversation. It's been so great getting to know her and also to hear about her background. And uh, Nancy, speaking of that, first of all, welcome to the show. And um, can you give us a quick overview as far as your personal journey, your background, and uh, what is it that you do right now? And uh, if you can walk us through that, that'd, that'd be great. Thank you, John. Well, I'm very excited to be here. And thank you to your team as well who invited me. So I'm thrilled on this soggy, rainy day in Connecticut. I have a sunshine, a light with you guys. So thank you. Um, so very simply, I was that corporate uh, executive. I worked for 40 years very, very diligently, um, ultimately in retained executive search. It was very stressful, but we really did a lot of great work putting in amazing executives who really changed the course of the business. That oftentimes was our directive. So I felt very privileged to work with Fortune 10 global fortune, 10 companies down to private equity, including VC. I spanned a big breadth of industries and category function specific in the C-suite. Did a lot of CFOs, a lot of board work, et cetera. So that was really fun. And then I decided I wanted to um, break all the rules yet again and uh, built my own company, which was very successful, called Search Execution, which I just adored my clients and my candidates. And I felt very privileged to have the freedom, more freedom than that of a public company. You know, Corn Ferry is the number one retained executive search firm in the world. And I felt very honored to uh, work in those uh, hallowed halls, if you will. So then one day, you know, I'm working, 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 and it's late at night. And I say, you know, hmm, I think it's getting time to retire. But like, what should I be doing? I don't know. Um, how do I get off this uh, hamster wheel? Because I'm so used to it, right? Our thought process becomes so not conscious, but very subconscious is what I do, right? So this uh, really was a five-year journey to learning much more about retirement uh, from the physical, from the social, from the emotional point of view. And then also I felt that I really needed health support. So what are the lifestyles? How can I change my life um, so that I can disrupt retirement the way we think about retirement today because it doesn't exist. We have the privilege today to make up our own retirement journey. Everyone does. And John, as you and I just were talking, we're saying, you know, I'm saying and you're saying about the same thing that I believe that you can't have retirement without your health. And what's so exciting today and so important for those that are listening either live or will be tuning in, is that the science and technology is changing so radically. What can we do today to promote our health so that it will impact our longevity? Mm. And we know the statistics are very forbearing in terms of illness and also in terms of 
really situations that we could catch either early or that we simply can, as I like to say, fly over them. So having a well-rounded approach, this wellness industry is massive, but making sure that it's really anchored in the science and the knowledge and to keep upgrading that literally moment by moment to be able to help those that we serve. So that's what I do. I work with business experts uh, in and around retirement with a sense of urgency that they're coming out and really set them on a path toward uh, longevity, right? And uh, freedom and things that they want to do and as they design. Right. So Nancy, when working with a lot of executives and a lot of folks that are preparing for this stage and maybe even some folks that have already entered that next stage of life. And I know a lot of our listeners, they recognize the fact I don't like the word retirement. And so we just <laughs> yes. call that next stage of life. We all know what retirement is, I think. And uh, it's about heading to that next stage of life. But have you found that with a lot of people, what they envision that time looking like is actually different than reality? Yes, 100%. So um, I think I come at this in a couple of different ways, John. So, you know, I define it as, you know, we go to school, we get some skill sets, right? Be it college, trade school, something, working, working uh, to build this skill set. Then we then go to work and we progress through either the companies or we're recruited out. Somehow we get these skill sets. And at some point, all of us, will retire. And as you say, this word is globally hated. Do any of the global studies in any language, it is that. But at that pillar, if you look at an inverse triangle, at the top of that, that space, which you call a second chapter, basically, or you know, another chapter of one's life, we can have many retirements. I have had many retirements myself. It's very expansive. And you are only limited by how you think about it, how you design it, you use the word intention, and how I like to say you're curious. So for my clients, and certainly for myself, I tried so many things, John. I thought, oh, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I know I'm going to like this. But by the time I got there, I decided, hmm, yeah, not so much. Mm. Backtracked a little bit and tried again. So it's about trying, learning, and figuring out what are next steps. And that is called life right? So life doesn't stop. That's what I think you and I are trying to express yeah. to the audience that life keeps going on. Just because you enter into this stage doesn't mean you don't have problems. And it also doesn't mean that you can't keep evolving, right? Keep evolving. Yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned that as far as, you know, trying things, learning things, evolving. And yet within that entire thought, as far as really being curious, mm -hmm. there is a certain level of planning along the way. Yes. <laughs> I thought I've ever seen somewhere on, your, on one of your websites, one of your writings uh, about this. Your What you focus on is plan you, own you, and move you. Can you kind of walk through those three different phases and how do you help people transition in those three areas? Yeah, that's such a great um, a question, John. So thank you. So what, what I was starting to see in the marketplace is that we don't educate uh, in terms of how to do this in the market. Yes, we work with our companies and we save money. Yes, we will financially invest in portfolios. Yes, our company will match. There's education there if you care to take part in it. But what is lacking in the market is you, the person. And so planning for that person, honoring yourself. So my first biggest takeaway for Plan You, <clears throat> excuse me, is to put yourself first. When's the first, when's the time that you've ever put yourself first? Mm -hmm. I can tell you I was well into my 60s before I've ever put myself first. I was brought up with your family's first, the mm -hmm. company's first, your people that you serve, your clients, everybody's first. So that's plan you, putting yourself first. Mm -hmm. Owning you means, hmm, guess what? You are 150% responsible for you, 
right? So taking ownership of you so that you can have your authenticity and you can have agency in life. And I think that that's such a big step for people. Your accountant can't help you. Your lawyer can't help you. Your community people, yes, they can lift you up and serve you if you're, you hire these people, but they can't do it for you. You have to take action yourself. And mm. this, is an, this is an interesting concept for people. They don't always take action. And then, <clears throat> and, but they want things, right? But they want things, but it requires action. And the last move is statistically proven that moving, meaning move your mind, your body, and your soul mm. is one of the key elements to overall health. And we don't do it. We just don't do it. You know, I know this tall house for a lot of folks is probably going to be like, wait a minute here. I thought planning for retirement was solely financial. And mm -hmm. I think that the financial services industry, they have done a huge disservice as far as for people's actual enjoyment and contentment in retirement, because all they focus upon is the number and whatever yeah. that number is. And we have these green lines and we've got these these orange numbers and all these different things, it revolves around the financial. And yet you're starting to talk about things that are so much deeper than that, that are much more impactful than that. Things like personal well-being, fulfillment. And so when you start thinking about the differences of financial and then planning in other areas, what do you see to be the biggest difference in how we go about and plan on those things? In terms of the most impactful piece? Is yeah. that what you're asking? Exactly right. I think it's to honor yourself. It's an opportunity to change your identity, to not own the fact that, let's just say I'm giving myself as an example, you know, this partner from Corn Ferry or that I was a corporate executive, uh, but that I'm more than that. And mm -hmm. that's what I talk about, the expansive piece at the top. Mm -hmm. You can learn any skill set. It's a matter of putting your heart to. I continue to educate myself every every quarter. There's something that I really dedicate myself to learning that I think I can pass on, right? That's the beauty of this business that I'm in, that I learn something, it creates impact in me, then I can share it with my clients, right? There's an enjoyment, there's a thread that goes through. And so that my clients can... Uh, honor themselves. And, you know, there's a new book out with Oprah and Arthur Brooks. I don't know if you've uh, been seeing all the, the, they've gotten a lot of uh, promotion, um, but I've watched a few podcasts and he's really an extraordinary human and, you know, Harvard professor and just brilliant, brilliant minds with Oprah. And he talks about, he's 59, I believe he said, and he talks about finding enjoyment at this stage in life being satisfied right, with less, satisfied with less, but that it serves the purpose, your purpose. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about identity and changing your identity, and I, and you alluded um, to a, a prior podcast, a guest, you know, finding your, re, rethinking about your value system mm -hmm. and values are, are made up of a lot of different things, but we'll just use this as an example. Really, John, if you ask, when did I assign myself those values? A long, long time ago. I never upgraded them. And also I took on some of my company values, right? We all do, right? But yeah. weren't they all mine? Right. No. So there's so many things. I think that um, in retirement, and I know you see this with your clients as well, that while uh, retirement, second chapter, however you want to define it, you have to live it. It's not something that you can imagine. You have to be living and breathing in it. And then you understand how complex these lifestyles, this way, not of doing, but of being, right? Creating impact because mm -hmm. of your purpose mm -hmm. uh, become. So you are that living, breathing entity of yeah. you yourself of John when you finally step yeah. over that line so Nancy when you're talking about going from his life of doing mm -hmm. which is what a lot of uh, business managers and executives have spent their entire life doing is his life exactly. of doing, 
And like you had just mentioned, a lot of times those core values, maybe they're not personalized values, but they've been kind of assumed by mm -hmm. the corporations that we work for or the entities that we're associated with on to being into a mindset of being. That's a significant change of outlook. It's a change that we've always <laughs> known. And we know it's difficult for us a lot of times to go through change. And a lot of times change brings up fear mm. in people's lives. Have you seen a way or a process for people to start to navigate change and to deal with that fear in the process? Yes. So I'm going to step out on a ledge, how, how I usually do, but I'm going to do this. Um, I think that it is, I'm so passionate about this. So we talk about, you talked about intention. I mean, that's a philosophy of, of your firm. And I love that, that you, you share this with, with your um, um, community. And I think so many of us, as you suggested, are living the day-to-day and -day what I call survival mode. It's really mm -hmm. a very subconscious living. We just do it. We wake up, we brush our teeth, we go get the train, we go here, we do there. I got a meeting, I got to go to John, I got to talk to this person, that person. Rather than conscious living. And conscious living is a totally different state of being. And it's very purposeful and driven. And there's a, a wonderful community called the Exchange community and they teach uh, really conscious leadership but I talk about you have to be a conscious leader to be leading yourself as well mm -hmm. right so you can train there's so many transferable skill sets right yeah. and so I think it's by exploring and that fear factor is huge John absolutely and people uh, will procrastinate. They won't won't take action. They won't move forward. Well, wait a second. I got to go talk to my friends. John, I'll get back to you. I don't know. Da, 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 da. They don't move, right? And then what happens? Life passes by, right? So there's a lot of pitfalls in this. But I believe, and I'm I'm starting to study some of these um, very interesting ideas, studying our own subconscious in early stage development, we're learning about this. This is in, in science mm -hmm. um, that we really can help eliminate a lot of these limiting belief systems and fear is part of that. Fearful of what? Why am I fearful of this? I always ask people, you know, think about what's the origin of that? Hmm. You know, it's so critical, Nance. I mean, if, if we never get past that fear, we mm -hmm. never get past the really the need to come about change and the need to be curious and the need to be uh, all of a sudden, maybe that fear of what this next stage is unknown because we've been living a life of doing. Mm -hmm. Well, then truly that has impact as far as on health, physical health, has Absolutely. impact as far as mental health, um, has impact as far as relationally. And so then all of a sudden, then we have the next 20, 30, 35 years of life and we are not living it to its fullest extent and maybe even not to the length as far as the number of days that we can live. And you've mentioned science a number of times. Mm -hmm. How much do you think science plays into this entire discussion? Is that a large part of what you're finding? Yes, mm -hmm. science and technology. So for instance, I'm wearing an aura ring, you know, a wearable technology, there's shirts, there's wristbands, there's all sorts of things that are at the consumer level. I consider myself a consumer and how we can, we are, we're going back to ownership. I am owning, did I sleep enough last night? I am owning, oh, did I stay up really late and have dinner very, very late? Uh, there's all sorts of blood monitoring machines for mm -hmm. diabetes and sugar. I mean, the list is endless. I mean, that's a whole separate series of podcasts for you yep. Yep. to investigate. But yes, oh, absolutely. And their price price point, they're not just for elite CEO level people right. that have special teams or they fly into special places. There are that. But this is really available to the American consumer now. You know, it's it's just so interesting you bring this up. The last three years, um, I've actually become a huge user of different wearables uh, to track pretty much every single aspect of, of my physical being. 
And so awesome. not just not just heartbeat, but all my oxygenation, all of my numbers, as far as all of my moods and kind of where I'm at with energy levels. And and it's amazing, uh, besides productivity, what I'm able to do, besides energy level, what we're able to do. Yes. Uh, also, in the moment, I've noticed I've had a higher level of contentment in the projects I'm working on. Mm. It has given me a redefined, really, vision of purpose. Yes. And so I think it's interesting how all of that is connected Mm-hmm. And I think that as people are transitioning um, well, from that, that really that period of working and doing, and they're transitioning that next phase of life, there's a lot of things they don't know. And so in the past, their purpose may have been, you know, it's career, maybe it's provision right. for family. It's all external stuff, right? All right? of that is very much external. Yes. Mm-hmm. So then how important is now we've just talked about as far as getting to that point on the physical and being mm-hmm. able to track that with the wearables and how that plays into the ultimate um, potential health of an individual. But we have the other part of the purpose, and the purpose was very external for so many people for so many years. Now we're transitioning that new phase of life. And so what I'm thinking about that is the discussions we have with clients, it, it always revolves around what is the purpose of what you're doing with yeah. this season? What is the purpose of what we're doing? And so in trying to get them to get to that point, from your perspective professionally, how important would you say is structure and purpose in retirement, in that next phase, and how can somebody create and maintain it after leaving that structured career of what they've always known? Is that something where it's more of a journey to develop, or is that something where it's more organic as far as where you sit? Yeah, these are beautiful words that you're that you're you're talking about. So when I hear the word structure, I think about, and I don't know how you think about uh, for your clients, but what I'm thinking about is we're so calendar aligned, like John, you and I were meeting at a certain time today, right? We're not, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. And we are all driven by calendar. I don't care if you are the CEO uh, the parking guy in the garage, you've got to get there at a certain time. If you're the mom who supports the entire family, the hardest job ever, you know, we are driven by calendar and all of a sudden, and this is part of the fear factor too, John, that I hear uh, from my clients is, wow, I've got a block of time. I'm not doing anything. How mm-hmm. come my phone's not ringing? Where are my friends? Mm-hmm. Right. So, so that's the structure. So to organize oneself with calendar and i put every i encourage all my clients to put everything john i'm going to go to yoga class today because i will Mm -hmm. feel better so i'm going to have block off my thing i'm going to go to early morning or late evening so i need to you know that's my time um in terms of purpose uh scientifically speaking if you do the research uh that is one of the key drivers to a successful I know you don't like to use the word retirement, but second chapter, yeah. uh, second inning, whatever, whatever we wanted. That is so important. And I think that talks about the synergistic connection between the mind and the heart. And that is why that person is living. But I'd like to suggest one more step. Uh, in terms of, so that's for the person, right? So my, my, my purpose is to really guide executives in and around retirement. And I want to support them on, as you suggested, this journey, right? But then I want to ask the question, okay, we have your purpose, but now what's the impact statement that you want? Mm -hmm. And I believe you can have it in your home Let's mm-hmm. say you're a grandparent, you're, you're caring for the, the young ones, or perhaps you're growing a garden, or perhaps you're tutoring someone. Uh, it could be in your local community. It, it could be a huge global, you sit on a big board, right? It can be anything that has that meaning and throughput line from purpose and then the structure. Mm-hmm. That's just so interesting. Anecdotally, what you're saying I've seen the anecdotal evidence from working with thousands of plot households around the entire entire world because the people that actually head to that next phase go to retirement mm-hmm. and they can clearly state their purpose. Yeah, uh, We have noticed how they stay on their financial plan. Their variable spending is actually lower 
because they have a plan and a purpose. They accomplish their financial objectives. On the physical side, I've noticed a higher level of engagement, a higher level of, uh, we'll say, relational joy with people, even as they walk into an office or mm -hmm. have connection with people. But also from a health standpoint, they don't have a lot of the chronic issues that I see with other folks that cannot name their purpose. They cannot actually describe what their purpose is. And so what you're, what I've known is anecdotally for the last 30 years, you're actually describing from a scientific standpoint about the impact. And um, it, it's huge for people to actually go through and define that no matter what their stage of life is. Mm -hmm. But very clearly as they're heading into that retirement stage, that is a key component of, of, of really kind of walking through that next phase successfully. And um, I'm just, I was just so, it just blew me away when you were saying that. It's like, I've noticed this for 30 years, yeah. and, but you so clearly articulated it. It just, um, it just played into it. The other thing that goes along with that though, and I, on a number of your writings, I've seen about science of longevity. Mm -hmm. People are living longer. And with that though, it's tied to some fears. Um, about a longer life. What does that mean as far as with my time? What does that mean as far as um, overall with uh, with my fi actually financial risk? Um, I have a fear of outliving money or maybe I have a fear of yes. if I live longer, well, then I'm going to have more health issues. It's going to erode my principal balance. And so when we kind of think about that science of longevity, I know mm -hmm. it's a big part as far as overall and planning at this phase as far as what you do. So what are some key takeaways that you would think about as far as living that healthy retirement? Uh, what does that look like and how does that longevity element actually fit into that? Yeah, a great a question. Sorry, I'm just writing um, a note that you're saying here so I don't forget to, to say. So I love this question about longevity. Yes, it is something new, relatively new. Um, I love Dr. Peter Atia's um, statement uh, in his book, Outlive, and he's been talking about this on, on podcasts. And what he talks about is how am I living in my marginal decade? So I know when I went to financial houses, they said to me, well, Nance, how do you plan year one? What, what are you going to be doing um, post, post career? Okay, let's really think out, Nance. Let's look at three, three years, five years. But as everyone knows now, we are living 30 to 40 years longer. So Atiyah's thought process is that's the marginal decade. That's the last decade you are going to be living. You know, visualize this. Am I having a conversation with John over Zoom? Am I um, having lunch with my friends? Am I walking up and down New York? Am I looking at great galleries that I love to do? What is my physical, mental, who am I with? Um, how am I ambulating, right? And so when I visualize this, I'm doing what I'm doing now because I'm loving it, but I'm mm -hmm. visualizing it out 30, 40 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So then when we look back, because I want to live to 125, that's my number and that's oh. always been my number. Yeah. Um, so I'm going there and, <laughs> and I'm well on the way. But I have to do things now to impact how to get there. And so that's the piece. And I always talk about, you talked about healthy uh, longevity, but I wanna add one more word, uh, which is quality of life. Mm -hmm. Now I've done a lot of power of attorney work and some was challenging at the end. And the WHO has a statistic, the World Health Organization that most people live their last 16 years of life. It's a long time, John, 16 years of life with two chronic diseases, not one, two. Mm. So it, that's a statistic. And so I want to fly over that. I do not want to land in any of those camps. And mm -hmm. so I am doing everything I can that's available to me now. I'm not in a laboratory or something like that. There are influencers out there that are sure. truly lab rats as humans. They're experimenting, which God love them, but they're yeah. also pouring millions of dollars. It's a right, right. $3 million company. That's great. They're experimenting for us. We are learning. But I think it's thinking about really far out how you want to be living and 
everybody I would think would concur with this quality of life because everyone at this age has has seen the opposite. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a financial risk, just like you're talking about in terms of long-term care, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, cost of long-term care. These are all the hidden costs that nobody calculates, right? So when I talk about my non-financial finance part of my program, that's a huge cost that people aren't even aware. Oh, guess what? You have to pay for all these things. Mm -hmm. And it's a big cost. Hmm. You know, Nancy, we have been, uh, look at my clock. We've been going for 32 minutes. And uh, okay. I know we just kind of went through it. We have, and so maybe we'll get together again for uh, episode number two with Nancy and uh, walk through that. Hey, before we uh, though, before we kind of sign off, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, and so with the folks that are listening and saying, you know, what Nancy's talking about really hits home, it resonates well. Um, is there a particular place where people can go to online or uh, a particular place as far as on resources to find more information from you and, and also information on how to connect? Absolutely. Thank you, John. So easiest place would be my website, which is envisionhealthyretirement.com. I'll say it one more time. It's E-N, envisionhealthyretirement.com. And I offer a free consultation. It's a $500 value. So if you are serious, I'd love to add value. That's what I do. And there's some free um, downloads, like a sleep magnet and a few other things that you can take a look at as well. Yeah, great. So great spot. And also folks will check that out as far as in the show notes. Uh, if you looking for a hyperlink, it'll get you right there. Uh, but as a final thought, Nancy, what is one piece of advice you give to somebody who is heading to that retirement stage and they're seeking to make the most out of that next chapter? Uh, what's that one piece of advice you give them? Find how to reboot your energy. I love that. I love it. <laughs> Find how to reboot your energy. That's excellent. Nancy, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I greatly appreciate it. I learned so much from talking with you. I know our listeners did also. So thank you for spending time with us. And everybody, thank you also for this last episode of spending time with us here at Great Decisions and Incredible Lives. Look forward to catching you all next time. Uh, be sure to check it out next week whenever it drops first thing in the morning on Wednesday. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Thank you again for listening to The Great Decisions, Incredible Lives, Retire with Intention podcast with host John Creekmer. Follow us on social media, visit our website, and join our community of like-minded individuals redefining retirement and living incredible lives. Please leave us a review and share our podcast with others who may benefit. We wish you a future filled with purpose, fulfillment, and the joy of living your incredible life in retirement.